Now, from the University of Okaboji, it's Okaboji Broadcast with Jeff D. Welcome to Okaboji Broadcast, everybody. It's History Wednesday. We're back here. We know what happens. The history comes alive <laughs> right here at the Dickinson County Museum. And Mary Dreyer's here with me once again. Welcome, welcome to another version of springtime. We, we get spring, and then we get a little touch of winter, and then we get <laughs> some summer. <laughs> and you know what, Jeff? Since it's springtime... Our thoughts turn to water. Oh, yes. And the lakes, right? And the lakes, yes. And indeed. around here, it means the queen, and it means the boats, and yep. it means all things having to do with the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful water. The blue the beautiful, waters of the, the Iowa Great Lakes. The smell of the yes. water, that, that lush smell that you don't smell anywhere else. That's right. And the winds. The freedom, you the, know. The total package yeah, and, of the Iowa and Great Lakes. And we've got it right here at our fingertips. So. Yeah. Well, this has driven me to a new endeavor. Ah, uh, yes. And, you know, last time we got together was the day that the queen was raised up. That's right. And we talked about the queen. And, and that got me thinking about all the steamboats that have been around here. And I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. And I'm going to ask it of you again at the end. Oh, no. <laughs> and this We're goes for the viewers, short-term too. short-term memory. This is a, quite a trivia question. Okay. If there's ever a history trivia game around here, this okay. will be one of the questions. Okay. And that is, how many steamboats have been on these lakes? What's your guess? I'm just going to guess, total guesstimate, because I, I know some of the names of some of them, but I don't know... Uh, I'm going to guess at 13. Okay, 13's your guess? That's my guess. You might be putting out guesses, and I'll let you know the answer at the very end. Okay, very good. Okay, All right. I will even read a list of the behaviors on the good side here today, Jeff. <laughs> I'm going to read a list of the names. I, I can't tell you how relaxed I am just hearing that. <laughs> oh, this oh. is good. I learned something today. Yes. Um, I have been reading Aubrey LaFoy's great book, Smoke Over the Waters. You see that? There it is, yeah. Okay. It is just chock full of information about all the steamboats yeah. that have plied these wonderful waters. And not only um, like, you know, uh, facts and figures and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Aubrey in here has gone back to the old Dickinson County papers, the Beacon and other papers, and pulled out articles about the different boats. And he's gone into the family stories of the captains and the builders. And um, it's it's really good reading. That, that, I'm sure. Yeah, we happen to have these for sale here at the museum. Oh, if, wonderful! If your interest is piqued. Yes. But can you guess what the name of the first boat was? The favorite. How did you guess? Other than I told you five minutes well, ago. That, that I peaked before you put your hand there. <laughs> <laughs> the first steamboat on the on the Iowa Great Lakes was built in 1880. And it was named The Favorite. Wow. And I see that you're taking a picture of this, Jeff. Yes. But I have to tell you, and that's part of uh, Aubrey's story here, is that he's not been able to find a photo of The Favorite. So actually, Aubrey has gone ahead and photoshopped the word favorite on a boat that's <laughs> more, most likely like what this one looks okay. like. Well, that's okay. closer than we have, so why not? That's true. That's true. And we learned about the favorite, and Aubrey learned about the, the boat, the favorite, through reading R.A. Smith's History of Dickinson County okay. book, which is kind of the definitive history of the area written in 1901, 1902, something like okay. that, or published then. Right. And, you know, he was living the history. Well, exactly. It was published when these things were going on. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So So the favorite was the first. The favorite was the first book first boat. 1880. So, yeah, I'm going to read you just a little okay. bit about yeah, this cuz this is probably new information to everybody. Yes. The favorite was built on the Cedar River and run there for a time. Um, she was built in 1880. And she plied the waters of Okaboji until 1896. Okay. She, okay, in 1880 <clears throat> or so, she was shipped by rail to Spencer. Okay? okay. She was put on a train, shipped to Spencer. And Cedar River, that's over by between Cedar, Cedar Falls, Falls, Cedar Rapids. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, okay. yeah. So she was shipped by train to Spencer. And then she was loaded on a pair of trucks pulled by horses or oh. mules and sent up to Okaboji. Wouldn't that have been a hoot to oh, have seen? To have seen that. The boat being pulled by horses yeah. or mules. And um, she was turned over to John Hackett, who was to fit her up 
and run for passengers between Arnold's Park and Spirit Lake. And Elmo Henderson of Okoboji was the engineer. The favorite was overhauled and her machinery readjusted and she was ready for business. We assume this was done at Okoboji. Now this is a story to beat all stories. Okay. It involves, like I told you a minute ago, yeah. it involves a temperance, re temperance revival meeting at the Methodist Church in Spirit Lake. My relatives were probably there, actually. Sure. I mean, that makes it yeah. even more fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, it involves that, and it involves the boat, the favorite, and it involves her steam whistle. So are you ready? Uh, yes. Okay. This is a great story, <laughs> Jeff. At the time of her first trip, the Murphy temperance meetings were being conducted in the Methodist Church in Spirit Lake. Yeah. Okay. And I believe Do we the know, church... Is that the same location? I think it was the same location. Okay. All right. As it is now. And it was during the progress of one of those meetings that the outside stillness was broken by the clear, sharp notes of a steam whistle ringing out on the evening air. It was the first steam engine whistle ever heard in Dickinson County. Wow. The astonished audience was taken completely by surprise, <laughs> but few, if any of them, having heard of the fitting of the steamer. The result was that every boy in the crowd made a straight shoot for the door and boat landing, leaving Mr. Murphy with a somewhat diminished audience. <laughs> <laughs> can't you just see the grandmas and the moms? Yeah, and, you can just see it, can't you? The, the, and, the, I mean, and, the lead, and Mr. Murphy, the leader of the temperance through Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I going? think it would have been a hoot. <laughs> and, and Aubrey goes on to, to make a little right. aside here. This is a very rare passage of the writings of by R.A. Smith, as he seldom injected humor in his writings. Oh, okay. But he did this time. Sure. So, this was the very <laughs> first boat on the lakes area. And it, it cruised between, again, between Arnold's, Arnold's Park, Park? And, and Spirit Lake. Okay. So it had a long run. Yeah. And it had been all by itself at that point. It would so. have been all by itself. Just, you, you try to imagine looking out there, having never seen any of those on the, our, our chain of lakes before. Uh-huh. And there's the first one. Well, and realize also that these were steamboats. And that meant that, well, they were coal-fired, yep. and the reason they were coal-fired at the time and wood wasn't used is that coal was really inexpensive at the time, and the heat was more constant. Yeah. Um, I read that they could have been wood-fired, but there was a lot of fluctuation in the temperature sure. with wood fire. So anyway, these were coal-fired, and, you know, think of the smoke billowing oh, out of this. Yes. You know, and, and then to have this steam whistle, and... And I read in this book, there's so many good things in yeah. this book. You know, when I go on the Queen these days, um, I'm usually wearing my T-shirt and my shorts and my Birkenstocks. Uh -huh. And that's about it, you we're, know. And, and it's we're a dressed com down for something We're like dressed that. down. Yeah. We're you, you know, you'd be much like you are. <laughs> much, you know, much like I'm actually more dressed day. up than <laughs> I would have been. <laughs> but back in the day, it was a big deal to go on these steamboats. Yeah. And so they dressed to the nines to go on these boats. Now think of these women in these white dresses, mm -hmm. um, white probably linen cotton dresses, yeah. lots of embroidery, crochet, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff on them. The white parasol, parasols. All right. Maybe a know? bonnet, maybe. Who knows? Okay, now think of that along with the black smoke from the coal <laughs> <laughs> and the winds. Yeah, yeah. You think there's an issue? <laughs> <laughs> and, and dry cleaners probably weren't in, in abundance at that time. No, 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 no. Someday we'll do a thing on washing back in the day. Yeah, it, exactly. It's not a good good thing. You know, it, when you talked about the kids' first reaction to and rushing out, I can only imagine the populace that was here at the time. Mm -hmm. That, have you seen? Have you gone out and seen? You know, and people going to the shore to see yeah, this. To make us it. travels. Right, right, and and some of these articles talk about that. Yeah, it was a big deal. It was the first. Yeah, um, the second boat didn't come around until 1882, um, and that one was called the Alpha. The and Alpha. The Alpha. Yeah, there's, the Alpha. There's quite a few. I don't know the names mm -hmm. of. But then another <clears throat> boat that we that I wanted to highlight today okay. was built in 1882. 
and it was called the Ben Lennox. And the reason I'd like to highlight that today is that this was built on behalf of the Chicago, Milwaukee, and St. Paul Railroad. Oh my. Now, why would the Dickinson County Museum be interested in that? <laughs> Our depot yeah. was the Chicago, the Milwaukee, depot. St. Paul Railroad. We're in the midst of it right here. Yeah, we have a strong tie to the mm -hmm. Ben Lennox boat. Um, let me see what I want to... Oh, okay, let me tell you a little bit about this. Yeah, sure. Um, the, the Chicago, Milwaukee, and St. Paul Railroad shipped the material and machinery for this boat um, here. Okay. Um, the railroad, it was, so the stuff was shipped here by railroad. She was over 80 feet in length with a proportionate breadth of beam and depth of hold and had a carrying pass capacity of 300 passengers. Wow. This was huge. Yeah. I think, don't quote me on this, yeah. but I think the Queen 2 holds about 120. Yeah. I think that's the capacity yeah, of I that. Yeah, that's right. So this is almost three times that. Um, well, and then compared she, to the the favorite, I, I saw the capacity was was thirty. Thirty, yeah. So this had to have been ten times another one of those. Have you seen this one? Yeah, yet? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she was reported at the time to have cost between six and seven thousand dollars. She was launched in May of 1884 and made her first trip from Arnold's Park to Orleans about July 1st of 1884. She was christened the Ben Lennox for one of the officers of the Milwaukee Road who presented her with a magnificent bunting flag. Oh. Yeah. The Ben yeah. Lennox. Yeah. And this is something I didn't think about before either. You know, if, you know, back in the day when they had the, the steam engines, mm -hmm. they had the pilot who was, who was driving the boat. Right. And then they had to have an engineer down below. Who was manning the the coal, sure. shoveling in the coal? You know, yeah. all, I don't. I mean, it sounds like really dusty, dirty, I awful only, yeah. in the holds of the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Not not the it, Okaboji experience we no, know and it, love. It, it would have been a tough job. But think about how they communicated. How the pilot and the engineer co communicated. How did they communicate? <laughs> Are you going to tell me? Do you want me to? <laughs> I would love to know this. <laughs> I thought that it was going to be, um, I think it was on the Titanic that there was a tube, you know, that mm -hmm. went that from... That they spoke into, That yeah. they spoke into from the pilot house down to yeah. the engine room. Yeah, look how that worked out for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, good thing the boats here didn't <laughs> yeah, have that. Exactly. What they, they communicated by the steam whistle. I was going to say, did they uh -huh. use toot toot to toot, for toot. communicate? Mm -hmm. Two different... Let me see if I can find it. Okay. Right here. Um, communication between the captain in the pilot house and the engineer self, several decks below did not exist in the early large steamboats plying the waters of the Iowa Great Lakes. The captain could steer the boat but had little control elsewhere. Remember the old black and white movies of yore where the captain would speak through a mouthpiece connected to a pipe? Mm -hmm. Some of the ships had a telegraph that was connected to a control in the engine room for different speeds, but the steamboats at Okaboji didn't have telegraphs. The only way they could communicate was by whistles. To communicate, the captain had two whistles, one loud and powerful and one a higher pitch and more shrill. The captain in the pilot house would use the steam whistles in small, short toots to tell the engineer forward or reverse, reverse full speed ahead, half speed ahead, slow ahead, dead ahead, slow reverse, etc. Obviously, communication between the captain topside and the engineer down in the engine room was critical. Oh my goodness, yeah. When I first read this, I didn't understand. You know, I've, I've been on the Queen, I've been up in the pilot house, I've even got to drive a little bit. Oh, did you? I'm yeah, jealous. It was <laughs> yeah. Way open waters. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it, yeah. you know, the, the wheel is what turns the boat. Sure. That's not the way this was. And, and they had the, and on the Queen, there are two engines. So you've got two levers to push yeah, forward and back. Yeah, you starboard and the port side. That's it, yes. you've been on a boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here, the, the captain, the pilot, didn't have control of the speed, evidently. Okay. It was the engineer down below oh. that could control the forward, the reverse, the well, you'd half have to, speed, full speed. You would have to have that communication down to an art form. 
Oh yeah. You know, if, if you came upon something and you needed to uh, reverse engines or yeah, even if, just if slow you, down. If you saw a rock or something, yeah. you know, how did you avoid hitting it? Wow. Just think about that. Yeah. And I haven't really heard of accidents with these big steamboats. Yeah, and I imagine it, they rocks, could have happened. Rocks, docks, probably got them. Yeah. Biggest issues. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We don't have icebergs, so. Usually not in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I'm just amazed yeah. at how difficult that would have been. Wow. How difficult. So there's two of them. We had 1880 and then 1882. The. Mm -hmm. So that's and two. That was just the start of the first two. And we well, and we talked about the alpha too. So we're oh, up to right. three. There's three. Yep. Do you want to change your your guess? How about if I change my? I'm gonna quote. I'm going to throw it up closer to in the 30s. Okay. That's logical. <laughs> well, you're, not, you're not showing any cards whatsoever to help me out. No, here. I'm not. I'm not. But are you ready for me to read the list? I, w I would love to. And if you'd like to count, um, that would be lovely. All or right. you don't have to. I will announce the, okay. the winning number. Okay. Um, these boats were put on the water between 1880 and 1911. Again, the first one put on the water was the favorite in 1880. Right. The last one was the Sioux City in 1911. Okay. Okay. So there were a lot of boats in a very short amount of time. Yeah. Okay. So these boats included the favorite, the Alpha, the Ben Lennox, the Lelia. I'd never heard of that no. one. The Queen. Yeah, of course. The Huntress, which then became the Illinois. Okay. The River Queen, the Orleans, the Iowa, the Okaboji, the Des Moines, Sioux City, Milwaukee, Carrie Maxson, Sunbeam, R.J. Hopkins, Irma, Minnehaha, Hiawatha, Rob Williams, the Wave, and the Chicago, which became the Templar. Oh, wow. So where we at? Was that like 22? Whoa! <laughs> you get an A. <laughs> I can count. <laughs> 22, 22 steamboats. Okay. At different times. And it's amazing, you know, as much time as I spent in the Maritime Museum and have seen the pictures of the, the Sioux City and, and, mm -hmm. and so forth, there's, you know, well over half, maybe three quarters of those that I never heard the names I of. I know, I know. And I, nor seen pictures of. Yeah. The R.J. Hopkins, the Carrie Maxson. No. I, I, yeah. Those are the all River new Queen, names to me. The Lelia. The Lelia, the Irma. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea that, and I, I, I imagine they differed in size and capacity sure. and to whatever the need was. Uh, you know, we talked about, before. I mean, this was a mode of, the road systems in the Iowa Great Lakes. Didn't, weren't here? Weren't, weren't here. And this was how you got around. We, this was our road. Those blue waters were the roads around here. And people, now I know for, we talked about this off camera a couple of weeks ago, but I know that people, if they had mail, mm -hmm. there was a flag they would put out in their, mm -hmm. their dock and here one of them would come and, and pick yeah. it up. But there was also mode for if you needed a ride or... A, yes, yeah. so it involved a white handkerchief. That's it. You would go to the end of your dock and you would wave your white hanky and the steamboat would come to your dock if it was long enough. And what's interesting is that the Okaboji, Okaboji Protective Association bulletins that we've talked about several yeah. times... Yeah. Um, have lists in them um, for the different um, cottage owners who had docks, and they have stars beside them if they're long enough to take a steamboat. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 You don't you don't want a too big a boat coming up to your little dock and well, or shallow. Yeah. You know, and but I, also think about it. If you needed groceries, how would you get your groceries? Yeah. By steamboat. I know when the Manhattan Hotel was built, the lumber and everything was hauled in by steamboat. Wow. There were not roads. Yeah. So these steamboats were really, really an important part of the history of this area. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm sure not every property had a dock, so there had been some cooperation amongst neighbors and, you know, that... Sure. Uh, that and there were the public docks, too. And the public docks, You know, yes. and, and the resorts all had docks. Yeah. And that's how people got to the resorts was by steamboat. Can you imagine all the luggage and stuff oh too, my, yeah. you know? If the, if the, you know, many families came up for the three months of the summer, think how much stuff they would have brought along. Oh yeah, 
I've seen pictures of piles of big trunks. Um, that, yeah. That's how my wife travels for a weekend. <laughs> Jeff, I hope she doesn't listen to all these. <laughs> she rarely listens to me. <laughs> But, but I'm glad we got to talk about these steamboats, and we'll be talking about them again because we're we haven't even finished chapter one yeah. of this book, and there's a lot more um, interesting historical stories, and there were many families associated with the boat business. Um, of course, there were the Wilsons, the Roths, the Hendersons, mm -hmm. the Arps, and and others too that were all involved in the steamboats whether they built them or piloted them or, right. or whatever. Um, and some of the families owned several of these boats. Um, it, it was a big deal around here. It was here. a big deal in here and you know, the credit that needs to go to those families and those people that it helped industrialize, industrialize yeah. the Iowa Great Lakes. You know, otherwise... Of course it did. Yeah. It did. It so. did. You know, and you know, as you probably figured out, the Queen is near and dear to my heart. Yes. I mean, it always has been, it always will be. Yeah. And um, but for me, it's a, um, a it's a treat to go on it. I just love sitting on it. I have my reserve seat kind of on the Queen, <laughs> my favorite seat, yeah. front front left seat. Um, and it, and it's special, and I just go on there and I relax and I enjoy, you know, tooling around the lake and seeing the changes in the McMansions and that kind of yeah. stuff. But for the people back 120 years ago, the boats were also their transportation. They yeah. were a necessity. It, it, there wasn't necessarily a pleasure cruise. No. It, it was more of a, we need to get supplies. It was like a Greyhound bus. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've seen tickets. You know, the tickets and the schedules. Yeah. These boats had schedules. Yeah. And a way different lifestyle. Yeah. Well, you know, we don't think anything of hopping in the car and, and going to the grocery store and, mm -hmm. and, and back in five minutes. This would have been kind of a planned excursion of uh, we're getting yeah. on the boat tomorrow and we're going to... And we're going to take the Ben Lennox and yeah. then we're going to go to the park and then we'll get off there and since we want to go up to the fish hatchery, up to Orleans, we'll need to ch switch boats yeah. and go on this other boat. Anybody who's ever ridden a subway system can kind of relate yeah. to what this would have been but like. But you know, I'd so much rather be on one of these boats oh, than a subway. Yeah. There's just no comparison to me. Above beautiful blue waters or underground. Yeah, yeah, I think the boats get a win every time. Yeah. So. yeah. Wonderful stuff, Mary. Yeah. This is, this is just so cool. If you have not yet read Smoke Over the Waters by Aubrey LaFoy, I'd highly recommend it. I'd recommend it and you can get them right here as well. Absolutely. All right. Very good. Uh, any change in hours coming up for oh, the summer? Thank you for asking. Uh, I, I'm all about transitions <coughs> and yes. segues. Um, beginning Memorial Day weekend, we will start our new summer hours, okay. which will be Tuesday through Saturday, noon to 4, okay. except Wednesdays we open at 10 o'clock. We're open 10 to 4 to accommodate our wonderful Way Back Wednesday, yeah. Way Back When conversations, which are just a hoot. Talked about railroads today. Now, we learned a lot about the Superior Railroads. Yeah, I bet you can learn a lot about this building. Talking you know, about. they I actually didn't talk about this building today. I was hopeful, yeah. you know. Uh, but no, it was more about what was going on over okay. in Superior. All right, very good. Yeah. Well, we got lots of time to talk yeah. about. Oh, and, and yeah. just a reminder for people to put the evening of July 28th on their calendars. Okay. So Thursday evening we'll be doing our stroll back in time in downtown Spirit Lake oh, that we fun. did last year. And it was so fun and so well attended. And we have some, it's, it will be new and improved this year even. Wouldn't it be fun to do a stroll back in time of uh, going to spots where the steamboats came to? See, I, I just I threw fuel on the fire. <laughs> <laughs> and she doesn't need any fuel. So. No, no fuel needed. <laughs> Especially not coal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for, and we'll talk more about our steamboats in the Iowa Great Lakes uh, in the future. But thank you yeah. again for being here with me. Thanks, Jeff. It's always fun. Always a pleasure. Mary Dreyer here with <laughs> us again uh, from the Dickinson County Museum. We thank her for joining us. We thank you for watching us right here on Okaboji Broadcast. <laughs> Okaboji Broadcast from the studios at Historic Arnold's Park Amusement Park is brought to you in part by the Scott Troutman State Farm Agency in Spirit Lake, Quest Wealth Management, a financial advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, Advisor Jan Spielman, AJ Spielman, and Erica Wachholz. 
Duckies Marine and Motorsports Repair in Spirit Lake. Bank Midwest, Dream Big, Plan Wisely, Live Well. Lakes Regional Healthcare and Avera Partner. Ruth Van Locker at the Lake, where carnivores are welcome on Hill Avenue in Spirit Lake. Beck Engineering in Spirit Lake. B Radiant Laser Skin Studio in the Okoboji Plaza in Okoboji. 